Did you know that taking antidepressants increases the risk of suicide, especially for people with bipolar depression? Here's the good news. An Israeli team of doctors and scientists have developed a life-saving drug. Dr. Jonathan Javit is here in the studio to tell us more. Thanks for coming in. Well, thank you. So to begin, what is NeuroX, this drug that you've created? Well, NeuroRx is the company, and the drug that we've created we call NRX101. And it's the first antidepressant that's really targeted at the needs of people who have bipolar depression, especially those who have high risk for suicide. So what is the difference between bipolar disorder and bipolar depression? Can you kind of also define what bipolar of depression course. is? So when we think about depression, most of us think about what we call major depressive disorder. And those are the 90% of people with depression who spend their lives going between a little bit sad and very sad. And they may spend their lives fighting depression, but in reality, they rarely harm themselves. On the other hand, there's this subset of people who have bipolar depression. They represent only about 10% of the whole population of people with depression. And they go between a life of very happy, sometimes too happy, and deeply depressed. Those are the people who are at high risk for harming themselves, even killing themselves. In fact, even though they represent only 10% of people with depression, two-thirds of all suicides occur in patients with bipolar depression. And in reality, we all know people like this. One of the best-known people who died from this illness is Robin Williams. We all know the happy face that he put on for the public, but as you can see from what he said on NPR, when he was depressed, he was deeply and dangerously depressed and ultimately took his own life. So that's the face of bipolar depression. And current antidepressant drugs not only are contraindicated in these patients, but they may well increase the risk of suicide. In fact, there's a warning label that the FDA has put on every current antidepressant. Interesting. So how did you come up with this idea? I mean, I know you're saying that there's this high suicide risk, but is there a personal story that's somehow involved? Well, it, I didn't come up with the idea. This is actually 30 years of research into the chemistry of the brain that my brother Daniel Javitt began uh, first at uh, Albert Einstein College of Medicine and then New York University and Columbia University, recruited colleagues, including colleagues here at Herzog Hospital in Jerusalem understanding the chemical pathways of the brain that drive this disease called bipolar depression. And as you can see from the picture, just about every antidepressant drug we know about affects what we call the serotonin pathway. Even people who are not doctors, who are not scientists, will have heard the word SSRI associated with antidepressant drugs. The problem is the serotonin pathway itself is not sufficient in these people who have bipolar depression and thoughts of suicide. There's a second pathway in the brain called the NMDA receptor that's never been targeted before in people with depression. But think of it like the brake pedal of the brain. In Hebrew, you might say the brake seam of the brain. And the problem is when this channel is wide open, thoughts are slowed way down. And those thoughts you have tend to be negative thoughts, and you can't get them out of your head. And all too often, they drive people to harm themselves. On the other hand, if you use drugs that solidly close the channel, and a very good example is ketamine. In fact, the first drug we knew about that closed this channel was called fencyclidine or angel dust. And it causes schizophrenia in human beings. Because when you close this channel too tightly, and it's a chemical pathway in the brain. Think of it as a tunnel that lets electrons into the brain cells. When you close this channel too tightly, it makes you crazy. You have thoughts popping up all over the place. You can't control them. So, so the challenge is to find the happy medium. Uh, and that's what uh, Professor Daniel Javitt was able to do in his laboratory. And that's the drug that's coming forward. Right. Now, that's what I want to ask you about. I mean, I guess you've kind of answered what the difference is. But can you kind of, you know, right now, what is offered on the market to treat people who have bipolar depression? And how would mm -hmm. your, the drug that you guys are now offering differ from that? Today, there is no drug that is offered on the marketplace to treat people with bipolar depression and suicidality. In fact, people who fit that criteria have been excluded 
from the trial of every major pharmaceutical company, every major antidepressant, and the only treatment today that's actually indicated for suicidal bipolar patients is admission to the hospital and electroshock treatment. So we hope to be the first in class drug to take advantage of this pathway in the brain that's not been used before in the treatment of this disease and to bring forward a life-saving drug. Well, this is an amazing uh, drug that you've created, and I'm really excited to see how you guys are able to implement it and put it into action. And thank you so much for coming in. Well, thank you.